Hello, my name is Andrew Greenfield, and today I'm going to take you on a journey in this video of IBM Spectrum Connect, a free utility which provides a rich VMware integration across the entire IBM Spectrum storage suite, including our project Ubiquity, which allows persistent storage from IBM storage arrays to Docker, Kubernetes, as well as Red Hat's OpenShift. I'd like to take a special note to Joshua Boomert, as well as Jagadish Papaya, for their help in this video. Let's get into the main part. Why am I watching this video? A storage admin with Spectrum Connect will then be able to easily define in minutes some stored services, spaces, and push them to VMware's vCenter. Once that's done, the VMware admin is able to then self-provision that storage from those predefined lists of metadata and automatically provision based on those VMware policies from those storage arrays. This provides a tremendous level of automation as well as shared resources. Spectrum Connect fits in the center of this diagram. It actually provides that rich metadata for snapshots, volume provision, as well as management, all inside vCenter. It takes only minutes to set up Spectrum Connect and it easily connects to all of IBM's storage arrays, as you can see at the bottom. It's not just VMware though. Project Ubiquity, or basically IBM's persistent storage project, uses the same IBM Spectrum Connect, again a free utility, to do the same thing as what we're doing for VMware's vSphere and vCenter. Next, we used to call this product Control Base. It's now called IBM Spectrum Connect. It, again, it's free, it deploys in minutes, and we'll take you through that in a live demo later on in this video. What does it need? Ideally, Red Hat Linux, you can see the versions, and you don't have to put it on a physical, you can put it itself in a virtual machine. Here's some of the diagrams. And where does it fit? Right in the center. Notice where it says IBM Spectrum Control Base Edition is now known as IBM's Spectrum Connect. And it uh, connects all of the storage arrays in the upper right with the entire VMware infrastructure, which is shown in the rest of the picture here. Basically, again, providing a one-stop shot so the VMware admin can automatically provision storage however he or she feels fit or even by policies. So in this video that you'll see later on, you'll see that I create a brand new space, I create a service, I add resources to that service, and then I push it to vCenter, and inside vCenter I then create a data store, as well as then assign that data store to a brand new VM. This is the interface right now inside IBM Spectrum Connect in my lab in Littleton, Massachusetts. Now, you won't see this in the video, but I'm showing you the slide anyway, where you can simply add your storage systems once you have set up IBM Spectrum Connect. Once you've then added your arrays, you'll see this in the video, you create a storage space. And then once you have a space, you can create services. And each service can have rich metadata so that persistent storage or VMware can easily automatically select and use those services to then provision to virtual machines or any other resource needs. Now, once you've created that service, you'll then be able to assign resources to that service. In this case, you'll be able to assign multiple resources to the same service if you want. In the video, I choose only one, but this is a very powerful feature where I could, for example, select all of my flash arrays and make them into one particular service. You can edit the resources as you see fit so that they show up appropriately inside the various different resources inside VMware or inside Docker. And once you've done that, you assign it to the vCenter. That allows also PowerShell and containers to be used. I don't show this in the video, but I want to make sure you see this in this first part. This is also the same widget, IBM Spectrum Connect, allows you to push the same information to Virtual Realize Operational Center. Now, what does it look like once you have it all installed? vSphere, the IBM integration, allows these little tabs inside vSphere, where it basically will show IBM services, IBM volumes, and even vVols if you've enabled them. Let's go into that demo now. Now that we've talked about IBM Spectrum Connect at a high level, let's actually go into a deep dive demo which shows the functionality. 
The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my administrator credentials and log in. And as you can see, this is an HTML5 interface. So I'm going to log in right now. So once I've logged in, you can see my default space on the left-hand side with all the tiers I've already defined here in my lab in Littleton, Massachusetts, along with the storage arrays that I have here in the lab. But for the purpose of this demo, let's create a brand new space and a brand new service and provision that to vCenter. So the first thing I gotta do is add a new storage space. Let's name it. So I'm going to name it right now. In this case, demo space. I can even add a description. And again, this is gonna be useful for the VMware admin or the vCenter user so they can select the right space and or services. So once that's done, I'm actually now going to create a service inside that space. In this case, I'll just call it V9K, but for example, as you saw earlier, you could call it gold or silver, platinum, whatever you want. You can create different descriptions. Now, as you just saw the arrow, I also want you to pay attention to what happens when you actually use metadata. In this case, when I say only show me flash enabled, watch what's gonna happen here. My XIV, which is disk based, is gonna be grayed out. It won't let you select that because you've actually selected a capability that the XIV doesn't have, so it's only gonna grab those arrays that have that ability. So now that I've created a space, I've created a service, now let's actually add some resources into that. So in this case, I'm gonna actually go into the V9000 and I'm gonna select one of its disks, or in this case, an MDisk group. But as you can see, I can actually select multiple different flash devices, pools or disks or volumes, and part and parcel make that an entire service, even though it's across different arrays. Here we are, I'm going to just attach just this one particular MDisk group. It's actually gonna say, are you sure? And we'll click yes. Once we do that, you'll actually notice on the left-hand side that the resource will actually get attached and we'll then go to the next step where we'll actually provision this service to the vCenter. So as you can see, I now have that allocated capacity. I have it listed, as you can see, the V9000 known as collusion is now attached into this particular service, into this particular space. The icon's updated. We're now gonna go to our vCenter. Notice I have quite a few. So another powerful thing of IBM Spectrum Connect is that I can select any one or as many as I'd like and then provision it. Notice the icon upper right and I'm going to click through it and then say, yes, go ahead. So now I've actually provisioned a space, a service, and a vCenter. It's now live, and let's go into my vSphere vCenter interface so that I can take the next steps, which will be provisioning a volume, making it into a data store, and putting it into a particular VM. Let's go there now. Here we are in the vSphere, the vCenter, and notice I can show lots of different IBM related items here. There is actually the storage services that I've had before. Here's the new space we just created called Demo Space. You can also see the original one, default space that I've used in the lab. If I click on Demo Space, you can actually see the service that it particularly has, but it also shows other volumes I've had from before. So if I can click through to the services, tab, you'll see the other services that I've defined, including the brand new one. Here's that brand new service. Notice there is a space. It actually shows the volume size that's available as well capacity and how much has been consumed so far. So we have our space. We have our demo. This is all inside the vCenter. So a VMware admin doesn't even need to have access anymore to the array. And now that we've actually shown this, let's actually go into the next part we're actually going to create a volume on the array all from inside vCenter. So we can actually first grab our particular vCenter and our host, and we could choose as many volumes as we want. In this case, how about I make it 100 gigs? Great. And in this case, let's name it. You could actually have a naming structure, and I'll call this SE Demo 1. And I will now pick that storage service we've just defined for this demo. Great. You'll actually see that we've been using that flash enabled as part of the metadata. So you'll see the progress bar down below. So we've actually 
started it. It's actually doing exactly what we've told it to do. It's actually talking to the array and Spectrum Connect. As soon as it's done, we'll actually go to our next step. Great. So there is our brand new volume inside vCenter that we see called SC Demo. If I double click on it, it actually will show the various different metadata about it, including the volume UUID, the serial number, all of its particular attributes. And just because I want to make sure it's a complete demo, take a look. I'm now going to the V9000 itself. I'm going to the host and you'll actually see that same volume here inside the array GUI. In other words, it's actually gone to the array, followed all the policies, permissions, and procedures, and created the volume and then made it available inside vSphere and vCenter, all without going back to the array. This is what IBM Spectrum Connect is all about. So we have that particular volume. Now let's actually do the next step here. Let's actually provision it as storage. So we're going to go to storage here. We're going to create a new data store. I'm going to do VMFS. Great. Let's click Next. Now I need to name it, of course. So I will name it. Once I've named it, I need to then put it to a particular host. Great. Now it's actually that we've done the host. Let's actually scroll through and you'll actually see that disk that we just talked about. There it is. Fantastic. 100 gigs. So again, I can choose which type of VMFS I want. I could also further do different metadata and or provisioning by selecting any of the values in the last screen. I click OK. You'll see VMware is taking care of those actions. So I now have taken a volume provisioned it into a data store. Let's do the next step, and I'm actually going to put it inside one of my VMs. So if I click on Add a new hard disk, here's one of my VMs here. But you see how I could actually provision differently. Once I scroll through, you'll actually see that exact data store that we just talked about. I click OK. And just in case you're curious, we can scroll down. I click OK again, and now it's all set. So there is my VM. It has a brand new data store to use, confluence of IBM Spectrum Connect. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to myself, Andrew Greenfield, or Jagadish Papaya, or anyone at the Worldwide Storage Engineering Team. Thanks again for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you at an upcoming TechU or conversing with you over the web. Thanks again for watching.